In today's video, we are going to be going over how to eat for insulin resistance without tracking calories or macros. Starting a diet can be overwhelming, and a lot of people have difficulty sticking to diets that require tracking. But making changes to reverse insulin resistance and lose weight does not have to be complicated. In fact, it's really easy to see results without measuring, weighing, or tracking anything. My clients get great results following the steps I am about to outline in this video. So keep watching if you have insulin resistance and are ready to make sustainable changes that are going to lead to lasting results. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kate. I'm a health coach and I post videos on a high fat, nutrient dense way of eating. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Feel free to share and make sure to subscribe. And make sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and now TikTok, where I share new posts every single day. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you a guide on how to eat to reverse insulin resistance. Now, the basic premise for eating to reverse insulin resistance is to reduce your carbohydrate intake and focus your meals around protein and fat. This is because to reverse insulin resistance, you want to keep your insulin as low as possible, and carbohydrates are the macronutrient that stimulates insulin the most. Like I said at the start, you're not gonna need to track calories, you're not gonna need to track macros, and you're not gonna even need to track carbs. Using the formula I'm about to outline, you will easily be able to put together low carb meals without tracking anything. All right, and with that being said, let's get into it. But make sure to stick around until the end because I'm going to be giving you a bonus tip on something you can take before your meals to accelerate your results. Step one, prioritize protein. Now, a lot of what you read about low carb diets on the internet will say that they are all about fat. And yes, don't get me wrong, fat is very important on low carb diets but there is a macronutrient that is even more important. The first thing you should be prioritizing when you put together a meal is protein. I posted a video last week, or maybe it was only a couple of days ago, depending on when this goes up, on 10 small changes you can make to reverse insulin resistance. And in that video, I talked about the importance of getting enough protein in every meal. So I'll link that video up above if you wanna check it out afterwards. In that video, I talk about why it is so important and why it's important for satiety especially. But more than just satiety, protein is the building blocks for our cells, and there's a certain amount we need to get every day. By prioritizing bioavailable protein at all of our meals, you take advantage of something called the protein leverage hypothesis. This hypothesis states that we eat until our protein needs are met, regardless of energy content. So if we are eating just foods rich in carbohydrates, just foods rich in fats, or foods rich in both of these two, it will be very easy to eat too much and not feel full. But if you focus on hitting your protein goal first, it's a lot less likely that you're going to overeat. Good protein sources for eating to reverse insulin resistance include beef, chicken, pork, salmon, tinned fish in spring water, and eggs. A good rule of thumb is to get at least 30 grams of protein in with every meal. But this can vary a bit depending on your needs. So if you eat a meal, you have 30 grams of protein and you're still hungry afterwards, that's a pretty strong indicator that you didn't eat enough protein. So just make sure to up it at your next meal and you can kind of figure out the balance and how much you need that way. Number two, choose your cooking oil. From here, you want to choose the fat or oil that you're going to cook with. Good options are ghee, butter, tallow, lard, duck fat, and coconut oil. Olive and avocado oil are also good, but best to use at low temperatures or consume raw. And you really, really want to avoid vegetable oils at all costs. They can contribute to insulin resistance. So these are oils such as canola, soy, grapeseed oil, sunflower oil. Cut those out. Focus on the ones that I just mentioned. I won't get into why they are a problem too much in this video. I will link another one up above if you wanna know more about good and bad fats. Number three, add fruits and vegetables. Next, you want to add fruits and vegetables that are low in carbs. Examples of low carb fruits include avocado, olives, and coconut. 
low carb vegetables include more or less anything that's non-starchy so broccoli asparagus mushrooms cucumber lettuce cauliflower even spaghetti squash is relatively low carb depending on the dish you're making you want to have multiple of these and probably about one to three portions now before we get into the final step for completing a meal for insulin resistance, I'm going to take a quick moment to tell you about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that allows you to build a beautiful website and run your business. Now, I mentioned this to you guys maybe like a month or two ago in a video where I was talking about Squarespace, but I was reconsidering, or not reconsidering, I was considering hiring someone to revamp my whole website and when I got on the call with him and was telling him what I was looking for, that I was looking for a clean website that represented my brand, that got my message across, he was looking at my website and he told me <laughs> that it was already doing all of the things that I was saying I wanted. And of course, my current website, I built it on Squarespace by myself. I used one of their templates, but then I customized it with my brand logo and my brand colors and fonts. So, I ended up keeping my website as is. I'm probably gonna go through sometime in the next couple of weeks and give it a little bit of a revamp myself. But yeah, he told me it absolutely did not need to be redone. It looked really good despite me making it myself. Really professional. And I think that just goes to show how easy it is to build a professional looking website all on your own. You don't need any experience in web design whatsoever. And Squarespace is so much more than just a website builder. They offer so many features, such as the ability to run an online store and accept payments. You can build a mailing list and send out email blasts. And you can accept donations and take bookings, all on one platform. So if you want to check out Squarespace, you can head to squarespace.com forward slash healthcoachkate. You can start a free trial without having to enter your credit card details or anything. And when you build your website and you love it and you decide to launch, you can use code healthcoachkate to save 10% off your first order. Thank you again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. And the final step, number four, add more fat. Now you don't want to go absolutely, absolutely crazy, but definitely don't limit it. You want to eat enough to reach your satiety needs. As we spoke about earlier, protein is the key to satiety, but you're still going to need some fat. So obviously putting together your meal can look so many different ways. For example, if your protein source was a steak, you could cook it in tallow with a side of steamed broccoli, and then the added fat could be butter or blue cheese on top. Or let's say you wanted to incorporate this formula into a more complex recipe like butter chicken. Protein is obviously the chicken thigh and maybe some bone broth in the sauce. Cooked in ghee and you could serve that with cauliflower rice as your vegetable. And the additional fat would be the coconut milk added to the sauce. And of course, add spices to your preference. Other sources of fat to add to your meals include avocado, cheese, olives, olive oil, egg yolks, full fat yogurt, sour cream, heavy cream, mayo, salad dressings, and hollandaise sauce. And for mayo and sauces, I just want to mention to make sure you are buying from brands that are low in sugar and vegetable oil free. Primal Kitchen is a really great brand that has uh, no seed oil, no vegetable oil mayo that I really like. And Undivided Food Co. is a similar company that we have here in Australia. I will link to some of these products in the description box down below if you want to check it out. Okay guys, and now as promised, I have the bonus tip for you. Taking one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar diluted in water before your meals can significantly lower the blood sugar and insulin response. This works for meals that we talked about putting together in this video, but also if you do have a meal that's higher in carbs, it can make a big difference as well. Now before we wrap up, I just want to say do your best to not overcomplicate things. Prioritize protein, add some low carb fruits and vegetables, and then add fat. It really is that simple. Now, if you're not sure what fruits and vegetables are low carb, I have other videos on the topic. I will link one above that lists a whole bunch of foods. But anyways, guys, that's all I have for you today. Let me know in the comment section down below if you've tried this approach and what your results have been. I know I get a lot of comments from you guys saying you've tried this because I've mentioned it in other videos. And from what I hear and what I see with my clients, it works really, really well. 
Let me know down below and make sure to check out Squarespace, which will be linked in the description box. If you did enjoy this video, you might also enjoy my video on 10 ways to reverse insulin resistance. This will give you a few more tips. I will link that here. If you want to catch up on my most recent upload, you can find that here. And if you want to check out my keto diet and carnivore diet coaching programs, you can find those here. Thanks guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.